In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, the great Jesus of the dead, the altar. In the waters of baptism, I did die with Christ, and rose with him a new life. May she now share with him eternal glory. In baptism, she received the sign of the cross. May she now share in Christ's victory over sin and death. My brothers and sisters, we believe that all the ties of friendship and affection, which lead us as one throughout our lives, do not unravel with death. Con <coughs> confident that God always remembers the good we have done and forgives our sins, let us pray, asking God to gather in unto himself. Lord, in our grief we turn to you, and you are the God of love who opens your ears to all. Listen to our prayers for your servant whom you have called out of this world. Lead her to your kingdom of light and peace, and count her among the saints in glory. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still and trust in me. There are many rooms in my Father's house. If there were not, I should have told you. I am going out to prepare a place for you, and after I have gone and prepared you a place, I shall return to take you with me, so that where I am, you may be also. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, truth and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. <laughs> Let us turn to Christ Jesus with confidence and faith in the power of his cross and resurrection. Risen Lord, pattern of our life forever, Lord of mercy. <laughs> Promise an image of what we shall be, Lord of mercy. <laughs> Son of God who came to destroy sin and death, Lord of mercy. Word of God, who delivers us from the fear of death, Lord of mercy. Lord, mercy. Crucified Lord, forsaken in death, raised in glory, Lord of mercy. Lord, mercy. Lord Jesus, gentle shepherd, who brings rest to our souls, give peace to Ina forever, Lord of mercy. Lord, mercy. Lord Jesus, you bless those who mourn and are in pain. Bless Ina's family and friends who gather around her today, Lord of mercy. Lord, mercy. Lord God, in whom all find refuge, we appeal to your boundless mercy, grant to the soul of your servant a kindly welcome, cleansing of sin, release from the chains of death, and entry into everlasting life. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray one naked of the rosary, the first glorious mystery, the resurrection. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord God, you are attentive to the voice of our pleading. Let us find in your Son comfort in our sadness, certainty in our doubt, and courage to live through this time. Make our faith strong through Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal rest grant to the heart, O Lord. May she rest in peace. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful depart with the mercy of God. Rest in peace. Amen. 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 Amen.
sadness to celebrate this funeral mass for Ina Murphy. <clears throat> uh, we welcome also all those who are joining us online, Ina's friends and neighbours who cannot be here because of present restrictions. We gather to pray for Ina, to bid her a final farewell and to commend her to the Lord. And as we prepare ourselves now that our celebration together may be a worthy one, let us pause for a moment <clears throat> as we acknowledge the need we all have for God's forgiveness and healing in our lives. You raise the dead to life in the spirit, Lord of mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner, Christ of mercy. You bring light to those in darkness, Lord of mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, whose nature is always to forgive and to show mercy, we humbly implore you for your servant Ina, whom you have called this day to journey to you, that since she hoped and believed in you, Grant that she may be led to our true homeland to delight in its everlasting joys. We ask this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And we sit now for the readings of the Mass. And Thomas grandson, Harry, will do the first reading. The second reading has been done by her daughter-in-law, Nora. And the prayers of the faithful have been delayed by her grandchildren, Rachel, Mac, Catherine, and her daughter, Lana. First reading. A reading from the Book of Lamentations. My soul is shut out from peace. I have forgotten happiness. And now I say, my strength is gone, that hope which came from the Lord. Brooding on my anguish and affliction is gall and wormwood. My spirit ponders it continually and sinks within me. This is what I shall tell my heart, and so recover hope. The favours of the Lord are not all past. His kindnesses are not exhausted. Every morning they are renewed. Great is his faithfulness. My portion is the Lord, says my soul, and so I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who trust in him, to the soul that searches for him. It is good to wait in silence. For the Lord to save. The word of the Lord. And he will raise you up on you. Shit. 
Second reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. The life and death of each of us has influence on others. If we live, we live for the Lord. If we die, we die for the Lord. So that alive or dead, we belong to the Lord. This explains why Christ both died and came to life. It is so that he might be Lord of both the dead and of the living. We shall all have to stand before judgment seat of God. As scripture says, By my life, it is the Lord who speaks. Every knee shall bend before me, and every tongue shall praise God. It is to God, therefore, that each of us must give an account of himself. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the crowd, All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I shall not turn him away, because I have come from heaven, not to do my own will, but to do the will of the one who sent me. Now the will of him who sent me is that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, and that I should raise it up on the last day. Yes, it is my Father's will that whoever sees the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I shall raise them up on the last day. The Gospel of the Lord. We gather today in these most unusual of circumstances to celebrate this funeral mass for Ina Murphy. I know that the death of a loved one, a mother, a sister, a relation or a close friend brings with it a sense of sadness and a sense of loss. And on behalf of the parish community, I offer our sincere sympathy to Ina's family, to our sons, Timothy and Leo, her brother and sister, Don and Mary, her grandchildren, her daughters-in-law, Norma and Anna, her nieces and nephews, and all who mourn her passing. I think the sense of sadness that you experience today is added to by the present circumstances and how we are restricted in the way we celebrate this Requiem Mass for and mark Ina's passing. Please God, at a future date, there may be a more fitting way of bidding her a final farewell and facilitating all those who would have been here today were circumstances different. But in spite of the restrictions that govern our celebration today, 
we're not prevented from remembering Aina or praying for her and inviting all those who would have liked to have been here to join us in spirit and to pray in their own way, especially all those neighbours and friends who are joining us online and would have been here today if circumstances were different. I was listening to a programme on the radio this morning that was remembering all the well-known and famous people in politics, in broadcasting and entertainment who have passed away during the past year. Among them were many powerful, wealthy and influential people. And it struck me as a stark reminder once again that no matter how well known we are, how much we have achieved in life or how much worldly possessions we have accumulated, we're all allotted only a certain span of years. That was true for Aina, who was blessed with a long and good life that she lived to the full up until fairly recently. It sometimes sounds like a cliché to say that a funeral is a celebration of someone's life. That might not always be the case, but I think certainly in Aina's case, there's a good deal of truth in it. It strikes me as fitting that we gather here today to bid her a final farewell and to lay her to rest. Uh, and we do so here in St. Joseph's Church, Cludove, where she was an active member of the parish community over many long years. She played at the organ here in the gallery and was a member of the choir, I think, almost since she came to Palm Cross. She was also active in the wider community, a regular member of the Bridge Club, as well as many, many other activities uh, and in the community life of Crookstown and of the area. Even though today, St Stephen's Day, we are still very much in the mode of Christmas celebrations, the central celebration of our Christian faith is the story or the celebration of Easter. After Good Friday, there is an Easter Sunday reminding us that death is not the end. Our hope and our belief as Christians is in life after death, where Jesus himself has told us there will be no more pain or sorrow, no more anguish or suffering, and where every tear will be wiped away. That's something that I think Ina believed and understood very well. She was a person of great faith who lived her life and conducted her affairs guided by her beliefs. Norma told me that she was aware that the end was near and was able to give instructions as to how her funeral mass was to be celebrated, especially the music and the singing, which of course was so much part of her involvement here in the parish. And that's surely testimony to the faith of someone who could face her maker with confidence and with trust. A wonderful privilege that's not afforded many people as they prepare for that final journey that awaits us all. So today, we bid her a final farewell and we commend her to the Lord. But we do so also giving thanks to God for her, for her long and good life, for all that she gave to others throughout her life, for the good that she did and the influence that she had, which lives on in the memories of those who are close to her and were part of her life. We pray that she will be welcomed home by a choir of angels reunited once again with her late husband John and all those who have gone before her. May she rest in peace. And as we continue now with our celebration, let us again stand together for the prayers of the faith. Dear friends, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father where he intercedes for his church. Confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, as we pray for Ina, we join our prayers to his.
For all the doctors, nurses and staff at Marymount Hospice, that God may reward them for the kindness and care that they showed to my granny. Lord, hear us. For all who loved Granny and were close to her, that they may receive comfort and strength. Lord, hear us. Lord God, as we present Ina's soul to your heavenly care, we give thanks for the gift of life. In faith and trust, we, th- we ask you to grant Ina the peace and rest she so richly deserves. Lord, hear us. Today we are saddened by the loss of Ina. For us, she was a sister, mother, grandmother, aunt, grand-aunt, neighbour and dear friend. May our hope in the resurrection and the promise of eternal life bring us comfort and turn our sadness to joy. Lord, hear us. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for Ina and our departed brothers and sisters. Cleanse them of their sins and grant them the fullness of life in your presence forever. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. We seek now for the offertory of the Mass. pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <clears throat> As we present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Ina, we ask your mercy that she who did not doubt your son to be a loving Saviour may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather the people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you with the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at his command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look upon the offering of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, that we may obtain an inheritance which you are elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Fintan, our Bishop, the, the order of bishops, the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family you have gathered here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, call to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant, Ina Murphy, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly bodies after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we have the courage to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you say to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us acknowledge that peace among ourselves. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Joseph at your side 
Be near, O Lord, to your servant Ina. On his funeral day, we offer you this sacrifice of conciliation, so that should any stain of sin have clung to her, or any human fault have affected her, it may, by your loving gift, be forgiven and wiped away through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. If you'd like to sit now just for a moment, and Leah's going to say a few words. As you may know, our mum recently celebrated her 94th birthday before she passed, which is a significant achievement in anybody's book. I feel it would be remiss of us as her family not to mark that achievement in a small way today. She packed an awful lot into those wonderful 94 years. However, I will summarise them as briefly as I can, as she was old school when it came to things like this and wouldn't be at all happy with me if I went over the top. Originally from Cork City, or as Mum would put it, College Road, she was born into a family of girls. However, the lure of the countryside proved too much for her, and she settled in Crookstown on marrying my dad in the mid-sixties. She quickly adapted to the change of location and her new farming life, and became very involved in the local community through the ICA. Coming from a musical family, she became an active member of the choir and played the organ in this church for many years. It is lovely to have Martina and Norma here today, with us today to celebrate her life with Mum's own personal choice of music. Mum was always ready and willing to sing her party piece when given the chance. Cards also ran in the veins of Mum's family, and she loved the game of bridge and whist in particular. Her social life centred around bridge in Crookstown on Monday night and McCroom on Tuesday. Sunday night was for whist, alternating between Castellac and Nockavilla and Christmas Day or Stephen's Day, when the cousins usually met up, inevitably finished up with a game of 45. When the local bridge clubs finished up for the summer months, it was off to Ballinine for a change of scenery and a stern test of skill, as this was for the diehards only. She had a passion for plants and flowers, 
and honed her horticultural knowledge through her membership of the Flower Club in McCroom over the years and enjoyed every minute. My dad's sudden death in 1993 uh, dealt mum a crushing blow, making her a widow while still in her 60s. But true to form, she picked herself up, dusted herself down, and with the help of her wonderful sisters, Dan, Mary and the late Joan, her amazing neighbours and a wide circle of true friends, mum carved out a new life for herself without my dad. I think people of mum's generation are made of stern stuff and are generally pragmatic by nature. Her own reaction to her terminal diagnosis was to say, I suppose something had to get me in the end. There was no complaining from there on, only a dignified acceptance of her fate. Mum was an intelligent, astute woman who liked to keep up to date with current affairs, and even over the last few years we all enjoyed plenty of engaging discussions with her on a whole range of varied topics. Mum devoted herself to her family first and foremost throughout her whole life. Starting out back in 1926 as a daughter, she subsequently became a sister, a wife, a mother, a sister-in-law, an aunt, a godmother, a mother-in-law, and finally a granny. I think it was her role as an adored granny that probably gave her the most enjoyment of all, and certainly contributed to her longevity. She was more than capable of waxing lyrical about her grandchildren, Harry, Rachel and Max, to anybody willing to listen. She was so unbelievably proud of them. Each role, however, required a different skill set. A few tweaks here and there to suit the local conditions, so to speak. Mum, you excelled in every role. Finally, Rachel referred to Mary Monterlier in her prayer to Faithful. I would just like to take this opportunity, on behalf of our family, to thank all the amazing nurses, staff, doctors and chaplain for the outstanding level of medical care, compassion and dignity afforded to Mum during her time in Marymount. It was truly exceptional in what are unprecedented times due to the pandemic, and we will be eternally grateful to you all for making Mum's last weeks of her life as comfortable as was humanely possible. Not only did you look after Mum from a medical front, but you also provided invaluable companionship for her. It was the little touches like painting her nails and doing her hair that made her feel so special right to the end, as Mum always liked to look well. The, the efforts you went to help us celebrate Mum's 94th birthday made her day and meant an awful lot to us. You helped us make her centre of attention, but then again Mum always loved a bit of attention, and who could blame her for that? Thank you.
gave your hands, Father, in her sleeves, would come in our sister Ida and assure us her hope that together with all the body of Christ, she would rise with you on the last day. We gave the kindness to the blessings to be shown in the Lord in this life. We have signed to us in your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Mercy to the Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant, and help us to remain comfortable in all the assurance of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you with us as well. May the angels leave you to paradise, may the martyrs come to welcome you, and take you to the holy city in the human eternal Jerusalem. May the choir of angels welcome you and lead you to the bosom of Abraham. And where that is as full of longer, we find eternal rest. Eternal rest unto the Holy Spirit. May she rest in peace. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful of the Lord, the mercy of God.